Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the Psychology of Survival, we're going to be discussing different mental strategies that you can utilize in order to overcome fear in survival situations or stressful situations in general. So let's get to it. So as some of you know, I work in the field of mental health and addiction services. So I'm going to be speaking to this from a clinical perspective, an educational perspective, but also a life experience perspective. So these strategies that I'm going to share with you, they're not only ones that I would share with people in the context of a counseling session or a group workshop or something like that. They're also things that I would utilize myself and have utilized in the past and continue to do so as no matter who you are, you're going to struggle with fear and anxiety in certain situations in your life. So before we can discuss different strategies about how we can deal with our anxiety and fear, we first need to understand what fear is. And fear is something that we've evolved to have, that all species have. It's there for a reason. Its primary reason is to activate us on a higher level. So we can conceptualize fear as being energy or anxiety as being energy or excitability of the nervous system. And it does this so that we can either flee the situation or that we can engage our opponent or adversary, whatever situation we might find ourselves in. It might not be a person, it might not be an animal, it might just be a situation that is highly stressful towards us. So our nervous system goes into a state of heightened arousal as opposed to a person who's depressed, who's extremely under aroused. Anxiety and fear and depression are on opposite ends of the spectrum. So when we're in a situation where we feel as though our life is threatened, our body's going to release adrenaline, which is, for some people it's going to be interpreted as a excuse to go headstrong into battle. Other people are going to flee the situation and other people are going to freeze some people will even faint so there's actually in addition to fight or flight there's freeze and faint so those are two newer additions that have been added to that model of understanding anxiety but it's important to understand that anxiety is energy so it can be empowering and it's actually there for a reason now i'm sure some people have heard stories about how adrenaline can make you stronger and in many ways it can Unfortunately, the, the strength of adrenaline and the length that it lasts is going to be short-lived. So you might have heard stories of a woman whose child was trapped under a car and she was able to lift up the car, you know, to free the child. And that's what adrenaline is there for. It's to activate the nervous system. All those muscles in your body have nerves which innervate them. And basically, if you can activate all those nerves at once, you can actually, for a short, short period of time be incredibly strong. Now this is only going to happen if your body perceives that there's a threat. So you can either channel that energy into running away, you know they say you run fast or scared, or you can channel it into engaging, or you can try to calm down the sympathetic nervous system when there perhaps is just a perceived fear and it's not a real threat. And that's usually what happens with any sort of situation where the perceived threat is bigger than the fear actually is. In some cases it might not be. So let's say you're walking through the woods and you encounter wildlife. Let's say it's a bear who's very aggressive towards you. Well, it's very understandable to be fearful or anxious in that situation because you're going to have to either fight or flight. So it's under certain circumstances you need that energy. I can provide an example. When I go and do public presentations. Typically there's a bit of anxiety there uh, and if there is an anxiety there I find I don't perform as well. So you need a bit of anxiety and fear in order to achieve optimal performance in whatever you're doing. Otherwise you're under aroused and you don't perhaps activate your true potential in every way that you possibly can. The whole idea of controlling fear is to control emotion in a lot of ways. So we should strive to be logical, uh, methodical, and make rational decisions under any circumstances. But like I said, that fear can be empowering too. So it's kind of a balance between using that anxiety to empower you in the situation, but also keeping a level head and using this, your cerebral cortex, not using 
the earlier brain, which is called the reptilian brain. To understand that, it's very simple. Basically, every mammal on Earth has this reptilian brain, which is something which is possessed by reptiles. Reptiles don't have this fancy cerebral cortex. That's why we have such big heads. So we can think abstractly and we can have foresight and we can make calculated rational decisions. That's what you want to use. If you're always acting uh, like a reptile, yes, your instincts might be very good, but you might not be making the most rational decisions. Now, the reason why I had to share all that with you is because in order to control fear, you need to be able to control your body. So the order of operations with the fight or fight response is typically body, emotion, thoughts. So there's an intimate connection between emotions and the body. If the body is not right, your emotions are not going to be all right. So the first thing you have to do in any stressful situation where you find yourself afraid is to regulate your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, your autonomic nervous system. So basically what happens when you're in a stressful situation, when the body feels threatened, the mind feels threatened, and you have that fear response, that fight or flight response, the first thing that's going to happen is your sympathetic nervous system is going to kick into high gear. So your heart rate's going to go up, you might start sweating a bit, uh, your pupils are going to dilate, your breathing is going to become more shallow and less deep. And because of this, most people try to master conquering fear on a mental level. But mental is further along in the order of operation. So it's going body, emotions, thoughts. So we need to control the body if we're going to control the fear response. So basically what that comes down to is trying to regulate the autonomic nervous system. And that's where you want to start. And that's where a lot of the strategies that I'm going to discuss with you today stem from is controlling the body so that we might control the emotions and thoughts. Because it's very challenging to become overcome with fear when your autonomic nervous system is in a state of homeostasis, which just means balance. So if you're not breathing deeply, if your heart's not uh, pumping at a fast rate, if all of those systems are functioning as they should, it's very hard to be overcome with fear, probably impossible, really. I mean, you might still have irrational thoughts, but that's a little different than actually being overcome by the emotion of fear. And emotion and the physical are intertwined, deeply intertwined. So that's why it's so important to control the body if you want to control the emotional response, the manifestation of feeling. So one of the things, of course, that you would want to do prior to any, you know, survival situation, hopefully, is having some kind of training because motor skills can offset or can at least soften the blow of any sort of situation. So if you've ever watched the Hibernian Sun channel, uh, he talks about how, you know, there really is no way to overcome fear. You just have to basically master the motor skill protocols so that when you're in a situation where you're extremely scared, like in a gunfight or something like that, that your motor skills are just taking over and that you're kind of not even there, that uh, it's all reflexes, so conditioned reflexes. So that would be ideal. Unfortunately, that's not going to be a possibility for everybody. You're not going to be able to train under every circumstance. Hopefully you can get as much training as possible, but we're talking about ways that we could perhaps uh, mitigate those emotions if we don't have the training or the motor skills hardwired. Um, so the first thing we must do is calm our bodies and in order to make those rational decisions. And it's important that we do this because survival and just life in general, it's a game of chess. It's not just a one dimensional game like checkers where we're just going to be able to react and we're going to have optimal results. It's, it's chess. So you want to think a few steps ahead. So if a family member say was captured or uh, perhaps something just happened to them before running headstrong into battle to get revenge, it's probably best to try to control that and think about, okay, what's the best move we can make so that we're not just putting more people in jeopardy. This is something that you're going to have to consider making calculated decisions so that you don't make matters worse. All right, so now on to the mental techniques and strategies and physical strategies that you can use in order to help you deal with uh, the fear that you feel under any circumstances in life. Uh, now, some of these strategies that I'm going to share with you are only going to be pertinent in certain situations. Some you're only going to be able to do 
standing up some are going to be you know they're going to depend on your body's orientation in space uh, during the event whatever it might be so the first thing i would encourage you to do and most people are probably familiar with this practice is abdominal breathing so you want to breathe deeply into your gut and that's sometimes hard for people to conceptualize typically when a person is breathing uh, when they're in a stressful situation they're engaging in what we call shallow breathing with abdominal breathing you're trying to push those lungs deep into your intestines so if you imagine your lungs as a balloon imagine your lungs expanding pushing on your intestines as opposed to pushing outwards out of your chest that can be a great way to just help regulate your autonomic nervous system now that's going to take a lot of practice too for that to become second nature but it's something which is achievable. So this is what we call a grounding exercise. And grounding exercises, it's a great term because you think about a tree, how its roots are grounded, they're, they're permeating the soil. And the deeper those roots can permeate, the larger the tree can branch out. So it's a good metaphor for understanding life. So really it's about your foundation. And the second thing uh, that I would suggest people do, if you're in a standing position, and if you find yourself becoming anxious for whatever reason, or you're in a survival situation or a situation where your life is threatened, uh, make sure that your feet are flat on the ground. One thing you're going to notice if you're ever in one of these situations and you do get anxious is that typically because of that fight or flight response, it might be an evolutionary thing. We go on our tippy toes almost, it seems very subtly. You're not going to really notice it too much if somebody was looking at you they probably wouldn't notice it but your weight shifts towards your toes almost so that you're in a state where you're ready to either run at a person or run away and of course this is going to increase tension throughout the rest of your body so it's the perfect thing with grounding then that we ground our feet that we make sure our feet are flat on the ground so think about your feet you'd be amazed at how much this can kind of take the edge off in a stressful situation just to first ground yourself flat to the ground to have that connection with the earth to not be way up here and that's the whole idea with grounding exercises is that you're trying to build back that connection with the earth as opposed to being up here in your head where you are just in your head you're not in reality you know the, the ground is reality down to earth there's so many metaphors that apply to this understanding of fear control. There's a lot of other metaphors like, you know, putting the foot down. Um, if you look at different tribes, for instance, uh, when they're engaging in different uh, rituals and ceremonies, they're stomping the ground really hard. And that's giving them that connection with the earth. It's almost like a, a way to sort of pump yourself up for battle. Even if you look at the formations, uh, military formations, parades, uh, they're slamming their feet on the ground really really strong just to kind of assert their superiority and that's really going to wake you up and really just make you feel really connected i would almost suggest if nobody was around and it wasn't in a situation where you might suffer from public humiliation is just a stamp on the ground really hard that's just going to send a burst of energy right up through your body and it's just going to invigorate you get you ready to deal with whatever situation you have to deal with it's almost like counterbalancing the extreme anxiety that you're feeling in whatever situation by an extreme form of instantaneous grounding and just make sure you don't hurt your feet with when you do that now i usually use this strategy when i deadlift very heavy i'm going to show you a video here of myself deadlifting 500 pounds last year and the reason why i do this stomp is because it's very anxiety inducing to do this exercise because it's an exercise where you could hurt yourself so i try to really get focused and i find that that stomping on the ground is really invigorating so that's another strategy that i offer up to you all right so another thing that happens when we're in an anxious situation is that typically we tense up on some level maybe not fully but in some specific part of our body is going to become tense so for me my lower back sometimes gets tense and that of course is going to limit the ability of my spinal cord to communicate with the rest of my body so what i first have to do is relax that and then in doing that in relieving that tension there that's going to relieve tension 
in other parts of my body and it's also going to relieve the emotional tension. It's going to help regulate the autonomic nervous system. So it's important that you understand where you hold your tension because everybody's going to hold it in a different spot. So some people are going to hold it in their shoulders and their necks, um, you know, their lower back like myself and their legs. So if you can first make sure that you're not holding on to any tension and it's usually so subtle that you're not going to really understand that you're doing it unless you pay attention to your body signs. So you really have to be aware of what's going on with your own body uh, and that takes a bit of practice I suppose. Not even necessarily practice but you just have to know where you hold it. So it's just a matter of releasing that tension afterwards and once you release that tension that's going to take your anxiety level down a notch. It's important to understand that you're not going to get rid of all your anxiety and you don't want to, as I said before, you want to use a bit of it. But if we can just take it down a few percentiles every, you know, by doing each one of these strategies, then that's going to put us in a better situation to respond and not react to the situation. Uh, another mental strategy you can utilize is just the idea. This one is more perhaps spiritual. Um, it's not really rooted in the body but it's an understanding that everything someday is going to die on this earth and you are going to be one of those things. That everything that came before us has died. The quadrillions upon quadrillions of different life forms that have lived and died on this planet have all been the same as you and you're eventually going to go into the dust at some point. And just keep it in perspective that you are one little manifestation one little organism on this big giant rock in this mystery that is space and i can tell you right now if your opponent sees it in your eye that you are not afraid to die that is going to evoke anxiety within them now a really simple mental strategy that you can try if you want to immediately boost your own courage and diminish your adversary's courage is to just think the simple thought that I am not afraid to die and try to believe it as much as possible. And if you just think this, that's going to come across in your nonverbal communication. And basically your opponent is going to pick up on that. They're not going to know they picked up on it. They're just going to all of a sudden, you know, feel a bit more inferior. And this isn't always going to work, obviously. But perhaps it just gives you that more fierce look in your eye, that look of control, that look of assertiveness. So if even for a moment that you can just think that one thought that I am not afraid to die right now. Everything on this planet is going to die at some point. Just like everything that came before me and every life form that's going to come after me is going to die at some point and I am not afraid to die. Because uh, your opponent has an intuition. We all have that reptilian intuition. It's just like if you were to encounter... Uh, dog and you know you are afraid of dogs the dog is going to pick up on that excitability it doesn't know if you're going to fight it or if you're going to flight it's just going to sense excitability so it doesn't sense necessarily you know that uh, you're afraid per se but it senses that something's going on uh, typically though i think most animals can also sense whether or not you're ready to engage or whether you're ready to be the prey. So I think this is a useful strategy that you can employ. Three really simple things for you to try out there. Grounding with the feet flat on the ground, deep breathing, and those mental strategies like keeping it all in perspective. Uh, just that subtle understanding that yes, at some point down the road, I'm going to die like everything else. And that's not to say that you're just going to do something stupid and you're going to make irrational decisions because, oh, well, you know, like a nihilistic perspective, like I'm going to die anyways, it just means you're hopefully not going to be overcome by that irrational fear. And that's really what we're trying to get rid of is the irrational fear or the perceived fear, which is not consistent with reality at the time. A great way to understand anxiety is that it's a wild horse. And I'm sorry to give you so many metaphors, but I love metaphors and I use them a lot in my workshops. Uh, basically, it's a wild horse. So with a wild horse, you have the potential there to have an animal that could take you places. It can do work for you. It, you can put it to work. You can make it work for you. Or it can kick in the chops. You know, so how you tame that wild horse is going to be up to you. But it can be a very empowering thing. 
So I hope that was useful to you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this dealing with the psychology of survival. There's definitely a few more on my agenda that we're going to get to in the next few weeks here. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. Thank <laughs> you.